Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 17. Finishing the plank base and making the lower box base that will hold the generator. What I'm doing currently is countersinking the holes underneath the base and these holes are the ones that take the bolts that will hold the engine in place. So first of all I'm countersinking the holes from underneath but unfortunately I do not have any 4BA countersunk bolts long enough to do this job. So why am I countersinking the holes underneath? Well, I'm countersinking the holes underneath as a guide for a slot drill. And if you're a beginner, you may be asking, well, what is a slot drill and why? A slot drill fits in the milling machine chuck and it's for cutting slots in pieces of metal. And as you can see, it has a square end like this. So because the hole is already countersunk, this initially acts as a guide for the milling cutter. By using the depth stop on the drilling machine, it allows me to get all of the holes to be exactly the same depth. And because the slot drill isn't tapered, it cuts a flat surface. So in conjunction with a washer in each of these holes, a 4BA hexagon bolt will be perfect to hold the engine to the baseboard. And I'd just like to say that this is not what slot drills are really designed to do, but it seems to work. You have to pilot the hole first, otherwise the slot drill will jump about all over the piece of wood. You can of course buy specialist tools that will drill the hole and also make a flat bottom around the hole but I haven't got any of those so I use a slot drill instead. Now that the four engine mounting holes are at exactly the same depth I thought it would be a good idea to do the same thing to the hole that takes the bolt that holds the steam turret in place. In this clip I'm just checking that the recess is sufficient to allow just the right amount of thread to stick up through the mounting lugs on the steam engine. And yes, everything's okay there, so it's time to remove the bolts and put them in a box so I know where they are. The next job is to thread the pre-drilled holes in the mounting base to hold the water tank and the condenser in place. I've already threaded some of these holes, but with all the components in place on the baseboard, I just couldn't get to some of them. So now I'm finishing that part of it off. This is a 4BA tap, so obviously I'm threading the holes 4BA. And once the holes are threaded in the wood, I will pour in some very thin cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue, or super glue, which will strengthen the threads. Pretty much like this, but this is repairing a mistake. I drilled a couple of holes in the wrong place. These were for the boiler mounting, and I just got confused. I scribed a line where the boiler mounting was going to fit, but then I drilled the hole on the line, which was pretty stupid, so I'm going to fix it. And this is a good tip. You fill the hole with some cyanoacrylate adhesive and then you rub down the top surface around the hole and all the particles of sanded mahogany fall into the hole where the cyanoacrylate adhesive holds them in place. And as you can see, the unwanted hole has miraculously disappeared. Time to get down to some serious wood bashing now. Using the veneered baseboard as a template, I mark out and cut out another piece of plywood. This has to be exactly the same size as the upper baseboard. I'm cutting this piece of birch plywood on my trusty Burgess bandsaw, which is very old and very small, but it still cuts okay. The next thing I need to do is to find out how much space I need inside the base to mount the generator. In the box with the brushless motor came this excellent mounting. It's a piece of metal held in place by four countersunk bolts. I'm just making sure these are tight because I don't want them to work loose in service. Although that wouldn't be the end of the world, because this entire system is going to be very serviceable. When I hold the generator in position against these pieces of wood that I was proposing to use as sides, they're a little bit too big. So I had a look round the workshop and I found these. And if anything, these are not quite tall enough, but by capping the top of them with a piece of hardwood, they'll be fine. So it's just a case now, routine woodwork, marking out the positions to drill holes, so that I can fix the pieces of wood to the baseboard. I'm using one of these to both drill and countersink the holes in the lower baseboard simultaneously. And by the way, the piece of wood that's in the machine vise is not one of the pieces of wood that I'm using for the sides. It's just a piece of scrap that I had left over. Back onto the bench now, to just write on the pieces of wood. And first of all, I did this wrong, for the simple reason that if I use this piece of wood as the front inner, it just so happens that there's a knot in the wood that would be almost in exactly the place where I need to drill a hole for the main lay shaft bearing that's going to be fitted in there. So in this clip, I think you probably get the idea of what's happening. 
and I'm currently drilling a pilot hole and I'm going to screw one of the pieces of wood in just on one hole at the end first. That way I can then align the other end and drill another pilot hole, then drill all the pilot holes down the side and that's one piece fitted. And I repeat the process for all the rest of it. Unfortunately my small mini craft drill which was well overdue to break actually did break. I have another one somewhere in the drawer I'll dig it out because these are very useful tools to have. But I must admit they're not the ideal tool for drilling small holes in large pieces of birch plywood. So instead I use my trusty DeWalt drill and this makes a much better job of it in half the time. I'm going to speed this up because it's extremely rudimentary and even I'm in danger of slipping into a coma on this one. And very quickly the job is finished. And now with the top veneered baseboard placed on top of the lower generator housing baseboard I've put the engine in position using a couple of bolts to locate it and by using a set square I can copy the crankshaft position onto the lower baseboard. Then all I have to do is measure between these two points and drill a hole to take the front lay shaft bearing assembly. Once I move the engine out of the way you can clearly see where I'm going to drill the hole. The hole has to be exactly halfway on the piece of wood on the side, not including the base. I'm not going to drill this hole just yet because there's some other things to do. I have some strips of hardwood that someone sent me and unfortunately I lost the email address so I couldn't thank him. So whoever you were that sent me these pieces of hardwood, thank you very much indeed, they really are very useful. I'm not going to labour this part of the job. I drilled and countersunk the holes and fitted all the pieces of hardwood underneath like this so that the top locates on the inside edge of the lower baseboard. And now is a good time to apply another coat of varnish to the mahogany around and on top of the main baseboard. This is polyurethane varnish and as usual I'm applying it with a cloth and rubbing it into the grain. And after this coat of varnish has dried I will rub it down again and apply a final coat. So that's three thin coats of polyurethane varnish which should both waterproof and oilproof this baseboard very well. And whilst doing this varnishing it's very convenient to sit this part on top of the lower baseboard and I'm sure now you get the idea of what's happening. At first it seemed a little confusing maybe, but now you can clearly see the layout. When applying varnish to any wooden parts it's really important to make sure you do not get any runs. So the last thing you need to do before leaving it all to dry is go around the edges and make sure that there's no varnish running down the edges which will look unsightly when the varnish is set. One or two viewers may be curious as to why I've used big thick pieces of wood not just thin pieces of plywood for the sides of the lower base. The reason for that is to just deaden the sound. The denser the wood and the thicker the wood, the mountain base is less likely to function as a soundboard like on a piano. When I'm running this plant I want to hear the steam noises, the noise of the engine, the noise of the boiler and the injector, not just a whirring noise coming from inside this base. I'll probably use some rubber mountings to stop the generator from resonating on the wood. Now I need to let the varnish dry before I can continue, so thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.